this is a right uh, type 1 tympanoplasty uh, moringoplasty because I think there is no problem with the ossicular chain but of course we need to check so we have uh, right here so 12 o'clock 3 o'clock 6 and 9 and um, I already took the pericondrum from both sides of the trigus and now I'm refreshing the margin of the perforation because I just want to uh, I always start with this Ciseau. Okay. I will probably have to drill out the uh, anterior wall of the external auditory <coughs> canal band because as you can see I cannot check the uh, anterior wall and the uh, anterior annulus which I need to because I will place the graft over the bony canal wall so I will probably remove the whole flap do the uh, total flap removal we also have this tympanoscleurotic plaque here this is the tympanoscleurose ici so i think i need to remove that because it's <coughs> connected to the malleus sandal and then i will enlarge the perforation of course by doing this but i don't think i need i, I must i should not leave it Because it's quite a thick black. Yeah, definitely this is quite thick. That's it. All right, so now I can start by making the uh, large incision all around the uh, bony canal wall from 12 o'clock to 12 o'clock. I use the round knife to do this. And uh, of course, I will elevate the whole flap. <coughs> First, I will start by elevating the anterior part of the external OD3 canal I use a smooth elevator and I need to be in contact with the bone all around and of course I will do this elevation until I reach the anterior annulus which I need to elevate this is why I need to drill out the anterior wall to expose the analysis, the anterior annulus. Stop. So I move the head anterior. I will try to expose more the anterior angle. So this is, of course, a transcanal approach. Okay, you see I cannot see the distal tip of my instrument, which means that I need to drill out the, the bone here. I, I may not need to drill out too much because it, I think I will have a clear exposure very soon. But I need to drill out this area. focus and then put a silastic sheet to protect the skin and I will draw out this area <coughs> so I like to use a diamond dust bar to do this and my technique is to perform a transversal drilling out first because I I don't want to expose the TM joint which is always a problem and we never know exactly what would be the limit of the uh, drilling out so I intend to do that because if I open the TM joint it might be a, lo a very limited one opening so I know what is my limit now in terms of deepness 
of the bone because I know this is safe Okay, I need to go inferior now at your inferior angle. Okay, we can see here the analysis of the uh, posterior inferior angle. Okay, let me see now with the uh, elevator again. Decoda. Okay, I need to drill out a little bit more this angle here, uh, this residual bowl. And then I think I will have a clear exposure of the entire analysis. Table en avant encore, s'il vous plaît. Mario? Fraise. La fraise. I'm going to put the elastic sheet right here. Okay, now it's fine, I can expose the annulus, uh, which is fine. Because I will put the, the, the graft over the bony canal wall. So I need to expose the annulus to do this. There we go. Now I can elevate uh, the uh, anterior part of the flap, but I need to remove this elastic sheet first. And this is the annulus. We have a nice exposure of the annulus here. So what I will do now, I will uh, make an incision of the mucosa cannulae. We have a nice vision of the exposure of the annulus here. And this is the mucosa. So I will cut the mucosa as close as possible to the annulus ciseau. And now we move up to um, the anterior super angle. Table en avant, s'il vous plaît. Stop, cannelé. So I need to reposition <coughs> the uh, speculum. Bring me to the other one, s'il vous plaît. All right. I think I need to drill out this bone. Allez, là, 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 because my exposure is not perfect here, so I need to remove a little bit of more bone here at the um, anterior super part of the bony canal wall. Là, 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 là. Comment? Oui, allez, allez, allez.
right? So now I am between uh, 12 o'clock and uh, 2 o'clock. Now you see, I can expose the annulus a little bit more than at 12 o'clock. Okay, so I can still now elevate the uh, residual anterior super part of the anubis and join the uh, anterior elevation here. Okay. Can we? Okay, I think the anterior elevation is now done. And I need to go posterior now and join the anterior elevation by elevating the posterior part of the flap. Thank you. You can hold it again, please. Okay. So I will. I like what I like to do is to reposition the flap. Can you, please? Okay. You can see the entire, uh, entire part of the uh, perforation. So I put the elastic sheet right in the middle of both sides of the flap now, because this will help me to find uh, the cleavage plane later on. Okay, like this. This will help me also when I <coughs> remove the, the, the flap. No, I need to reposition the uh, now the uh, table vermoise, the the, the, the uh, speculum table vermoise. Stop. Pardon, s'il vous plaît. The uh, canal is not that easy because we have this thick skin at the superior part of the of the canal, which doesn't help me that much. And I just want to have a clear and stable position of the uh, speculum. I think it's better now. Let's see. Okay, so now, of course, I need to elevate the posterior part of the flap. And also, I will need to separate the, the rest of the tympanic, the residual tympanic membrane from the malus handle. Décolleur. So I try to preserve the skin as much as I can so I stay uh, following a horizontal line like this. Can you? Now you see the posterior part of the annulus. So I will open up now the mucosa. And now I join, I'm joining now the anterior elevation, which is fine. And now I need to elevate the residual attachment, which is between uh, 10 and 12 o'clock. Can this in play? Right here. On se les coudées. Ciseaux. There we go. 
scanner. You see the core tympani here, which I can preserve in this case, which is not always the case in terms of tympanoplasty, of course, Tizo. Because sometimes we have some kind of epidermal ingraft connected to the core tympani. So in those cases, of course, I remove the core tympani, I cut the core tympani, Tizo. I think I need to cut this part of the, of the drum. Okay. Okay, so now I need to separate the tympanic membrane from the malleus handle. I need to dissect <coughs> the malleus handle. Can I manger marteau? We have quite a large air bone gap, which could be explained by both the perforation but also the uh, tympanosclerotic tympano plaque that we had and that I had to remove. Uh, but, of course, I will need to check the mobility of the ossicular chain. Fancy, okay, I need to remove this tissue here. Can I manger marteau? You see the needle that I have, which is a bent needle, specialized, uh, I'm, I'm using it specially for the uh, Mali handle. Okay. And now I'm going to join the uh, rest of the uh, flap, which is the anterior super part of the flap, and I think it's done. Now you see the Mali handle is entirely separated, and you see the, that this stylistic sheet which I left between both sides is helping me right now, because otherwise it could really be a nightmare sometime to find a cleavage plane. Okay. I think I have some attachment here. Table en avant, s'il vous plaît. Stop. So this adherence, I need to cut it. There we go, I think. There's some mucosa here, ciseau. There we go. Now I think the entire flap is elevated, and now I can remove the whole flap. So. First, before removing it, I need to reposition the whole flap perfectly. Uh, secure the position of the stylistic sheet in the middle and then remove the flap. Okay, this is now the flap, the stylistic sheet. And I will put it here and now I will re-elevate the anterior part of the flap, connect both sides. You see the analysis here. I need to reposition the stylistic sheet more inferior like this. Now I think it's fine. And I will remove the whole flap the crocodile. And I will, of course, put this flap on saline solution. Otherwise, if it's become, if it's becoming too dry, it's not good. So better to keep it wet on saline solution. <coughs> okay. Right. So now I need to check the ossicular chain. Table vers moi, s'il vous plaît. Can they normal? <coughs> and do stop. Okay. So now we have a nice exposure of the round window niche here. 
promontory, the Mali sandal, the Incus and the Stapes. And you see that all is mobile. I don't want to separate the Incus from the Stapes because I don't need it. We can check the round window sign with the light on the round window here. Uh, you see it's perfectly mobile, so there's no problem with your circular chain. All right, so what we need to do now, of course, is, is to prepare the, the graft and place the graft. Alors, table en avant, s'il vous plaît. <coughs> Stop. Curette. I just want to be sure that I will be able to expose the anchor angle because I will place the graft over this anchor angle, of course. So I took the perichondrum for both sides of the uh, <coughs> uh, trigus, of the cartilage of the trigus, and I already cut it to make it uh, both in, in two parts. Okay, the exposure is fine, so now I need to prepare the graft. So we have two parts. The, uh, usually the uh, lateral side uh, of the graft is always larger. Uh, that's exactly what we have. This is the uh, lateral side. So I will use it for the anterior angle. Okay, so we have this uh, this part which I will use for the anterior part of, of the graft, of the perforation I would say. And to help the placement, I will make two incision, one here and one here. It will help me to perfectly place the uh, graft anteriorly. So I will grab it now with the sucker and I will introduce it with the sucker and the needle. So what I need to do is just to take care of the anterior angle. That's all I need to do because I have a residual posterior part, um, uh, sorry, uh, medial part of the, of the graft which I will use for the posterior part of the uh, perforation. And you see, because I made this two incision, I can definitely cover each part with the other one. I take my time to be sure that I'm stretching the graph perfectly to cover the center angle, which is the major point. Uh, you see, I'm placing it over the bony canal wall. I just want to cover it first. I don't care about the posterior part first. Okay, so I stretch it like this and cover it with the, the uh, second part of the incision like this to cover the first part. And I put it over the bone. All right, anterior part is nice, anterior and is nice. I need to check now the anterior super part of the flap. <coughs> doing the same thing using the, the incision that I made to cover uh, perfectly the, the anterior super angle. You see now I'm, I'm, I'm going to use the second part of the, perfor of the incision here and uh, now the entire anterior wall is covered completely by the graft and I'm placing the graft over the Mali sandal wall and I'm happy now about the presentation of that and the final result is good so now I need to cover the posture part of the tympanic membrane perforation using the uh, <coughs> second part of the graft 
stop because you, you you can see it's not large enough so I will I will use the second part of the graft so I'm going to elevate this part of the graft and put the graft underneath the poster part underneath okay Now you can see the second part of the graft, so I'm going to use this for the poster part of the drum. <coughs> so I need to place it over the mallet sandal here and uh, over the posterior part of the bunny car wall and under the uh, first part of the graft of the middle part of the pericardium. Ça n'inspire pas beaucoup, hein? Encore là. Okay, I place it over the mallet sandal here, as you can see, because of course I use the mani sandal to hold the graft to avoid any medialization of the graft. This is the technique I'm using. Which of course does expose more to the risk of lateralization or blunting of the graft. But uh, the other technique would expose to a risk of uh, medialization of the graft which could fall down into the middle ear cleft. So I prefer to use this technique and of course to try to avoid to decrease the risk as much as I can of lateralization I use this technique of uh, filling the entire angle with gel foam. Okay so now you see I'm covering now the posterior part and I will now reposition the, the, the uh, anterior part of, of the flap of the graft to cover perfectly the uh, poster part of a uh, perforation all right like this this is good and this is good too all right looks good you see now I'm covering the entire perforation and even more than this. I'm reinforcing the whole tympanic membrane plus the anterior part and posterior part of the, of the canal skin. Now I'm going to take a little bit of a moment to be sure that all is clearly in good position. And especially, of course, the anterior angle. You see it was not perfect, so I will push this uh, part of the graft to be sure that I'm reaching the anterior angle like this and it looks good now it's all good all right now it's clear and now what I need to do is of course to reposition the whole flap I just need to elevate the, the graft it's fine I'm over the bunny the uh, maddy sandal touching the maddy sandal of course, this is uh, of course important to decrease the risk of lateralization to be sure that I'm connected to the Mali sandal. Okay, so now I need to place the flap. So you remember that I said that I put the flap in sal on saline solution to make it wet until the end of the procedure. So that's important to <laughs> remove as much as we can the uh, the liquid so I need to dry out as much as I can the flap and I'm holding it with the crocodile so I'm going to use the uh, sucker to guide to help for the position of the first the anterior part of the flap so you see I'm repositioning the anterior annulus so now we can release the flap Table en avant, s'il vous plaît. And I'll take now a little bit of time.
desktop to be sure that I am repositioning perfectly the entire part of, uh, of the annulus right here. So I'm going to put it here inside the entire angle all around like this. Now I think it's fine. And now I can elevate the flap itself. And you can see that it's covering nicely the entire angle. You see the stylistic sheet here, which is helping me very much to find a cleavage plane between both sides. Or if we don't put that, or if we we'll, uh, if we don't dry out the, the flap, then <coughs> both sides still connect together, and it's really could be a nightmare to place the flap perfectly. Okay, it looks very nice. I think I will remove the the uh, stylistic sheet for a moment just to be sure that I can check everything all around. Can we? You see again I'm touching the entire angle with the needle just to be sure that it's all fine. And you see it's really good. All I need is now to check the anterior superior part of the of the flap. The annulus is there, and now it's fine. I'm happy about it. You can see the anterior superior annulus. So it looks really good. And now the flap is fine, and the graft is fine. You remember that the perforation was uh, was here. And now because I removed the tympanosclerotic plaque, it was also creating or enlarging the perforation up to the anterior angle, anterior super angle. So it's fine. I think it's really nice. They, now the uh, the analysis is all around well placed. And now I, I need to re-elevate the whole flap to be sure that all is fine, which is really good. I will put a stylistic sheet in the middle here to avoid any adherence. And then it should be okay. Because the Mali sandal was partially medialized. There we go, especially here and fairly. Now it's fine, can I? And I will reposition the flap. Definitely. Okay. Um, I can feel the contact with the Mali sandal here, so it looks good. And again, you can see the analyst, the anterior analyst clearly exposed. So it's pretty good. So now I will put the elastic sheet and fill so uh, with the foam the anterior angle. But first, I like to place, to introduce three uh, elastic sheets. One here like this, to hold the anterior angle and to protect the graft and now two other two other uh, stylistic sheets to protect the skin all around the uh, external auditory canal from of course the uh, marrow cell that I will put at the end and this helps also to hold the graft because of course again as I said the risk is a higher risk of lateralization of the of the graft. We know that with this technique. But it's clear that because I use this now Jafong technique to feel the anterior angle, I have decreased definitely uh, and severely the, the risk of lateralization of lateralization. Okay, so now I'm going to use the the Jafong now. I'm just really taking care of placing perfectly this gel foam anteriorly. 
that's the most important thing. It's a really important technique to hold the graft in good position. I must say it's now becoming really rare. Although th this technique of total, total flap removal should expose to a high risk of lateralization, I must say that it's becoming really rare now because I'm using this technique. At the beginning, I was not using this technique of uh, using gel foam to feel the anterior angle. And I had cases of lateralization, of course, post-op. But then I used this technique, and since I'm doing it, very rare now, very rare which is pretty good. So you can see that I really take my time to feel this angle with some kind of pressure. Okay, it's nearly done, I think. A little bit more in this angle here. I will put something more. Okay, it will be the last one because I need to have enough room for the for the merosel. Merosel, s'il vous plaît. Okay. And I put the Mercel, which will be removed on the fifth day, as usual. And I treat the patient with uh, ear drops of Siloxadex, which is a mixture of steroids with uh, antibiotic, as you know, of fluoxacin. And every day, twice a day, we still inflate this Mercel for one week or five days, because I remove this on the fifth day. All right. Hope you enjoyed it. It's always a, a controversial technique, only because there is a theoretically a high risk of lateralization, as I said, and, and blunting of the internal angle. But I, as I said, this technique, if you use this um, gel foam uh, thinning um, of the internal angle at the end, we decrease the risk. So thanks very much for watching, and see you again soon. Bye bye.